Welcome to Guideline Central. My name is Dr. Tabitha Michaud, and today we'll be discussing the American Society of Clinical Oncology, or ASCOS, 2023 guidelines titled Immunotherapy and Targeted Therapy for Advanced Gastroesophageal Cancer, published January 5th, 2023 in ASCO's main journal, the Journal of Clinical Oncology. The intended audience for this guideline is for medical oncologists and healthcare providers involved in the care of patients with advanced gastroesophageal cancer, and the intended patient population is going to be patients with advanced gastroesophageal cancer. Recommendations for this guideline were developed using a systematic review of the online PubMed resources for phase two or three multi-center randomized control trials between January of 2010 and March of 2022. Each of the recommendations from ASCO will be given both a type and strength of recommendation grading, as well as a grading for the quality of evidence. The quality of evidence for each outcome was assessed using the Cochrane Risk of Bias tool and using the grade quality assessment and recommendation development process. Now, there will be quite a few abbreviations in this video, so we'll go over those right now. The first one is GEJ, which refers to cancers of the gastroesophageal junction. HER2, which is used to represent human epidermal growth factor. For example, we'll say HER2 positive or HER2 negative. AC, which stands for adenocarcinoma. CT, which stands for chemotherapy. PDL1, which is short for programmed death ligand 1, and PD1, which refers to a class of medications called programmed cell death protein 1 inhibitors. And lastly, CPS, which refers to combined positive score and TPS, which refers to tumor proportion score. And just to give a little background about gastroesophageal cancers, gastroesophageal cancers, which include gastric and esophageal cancer, as well as cancers of the gastroesophageal junction, are among the most prevalent gastrointestinal malignancies globally. Worldwide, there were over 1 million new cases and approximately 769,000 deaths due to gastric cancer in 2020, ranking this disease site the fourth and fifth globally for incidence and mortality, respectively. In addition, there were over 600,000 new cases and 554,000 deaths worldwide due to esophageal cancer in that same year. And with that, we have seven recommendations from ASCO for our patients with advanced gastroesophageal cancer, so let's get into the guidelines. Now in our guideline central quick reference format, we're going to go over ASCO's recommendations for advanced gastroesophageal cancer treatment, starting with their first recommendation, which is a strong recommendation with a moderate quality of evidence. And here, ASCO recommends that for HER2 negative patients with gastric adenocarcinoma and PDL1 combined positive score of greater than five, first line therapy with nivolumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum based chemotherapy is recommended. Now, ASCO does include a couple of qualifying statements for this recommendation, including for HER2 negative patients with gastric adenocarcinoma and a PDL1 CPS of 1 through 5, first line therapy with nivolumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum based chemotherapy may be considered on a case by case basis. For HER2 negative patients with gastric adenocarcinoma and PDL1 CPS0, first line therapy with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy without the addition of nivolumab is recommended. Recommendation 1.2 from ASCO is a strong recommendation with a low quality of evidence, and here ASCO recommends for HER2 negative patients with esophageal or gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinoma, first-line therapy with nivolumab for patients with PDL1, CPS greater than or equal to 5 or pembrolizumab for PDL1 with a CPS greater than or equal to 10 in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy is recommended. For this recommendation, ASCO does include two qualifying statements, the first being that for HER2 negative patients with esophageal or gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinoma, first line therapy with nivolumab for patients with PDL1 CPS 1 through 5 or pembrolizumab for patients with PDL1 CPS 1 through 10 in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum based chemotherapy may be recommended on a case by case basis. For HER2 negative patients with gastric adenocarcinoma and PDL1 CPS 0 or PDL1 TPS 0%, 
first-line therapy with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy without the addition of program cell death protein 1 inhibitors is recommended. Recommendation 1.3 from ASCO is a strong recommendation with a high quality of evidence, and here ASCO recommends that for patients with HER2 negative esophageal squamous cell carcinoma and PDL1 CPS greater than or equal to 10, pembrolizumab plus fluoropyrimidine and a platinum based chemotherapy is recommended. Recommendation 1.4 from ASCO is a strong recommendation with a moderate quality of evidence, and here they recommend that. For patients with HER2 negative esophageal squamous cell carcinoma and a PDL1 TPS of greater than or equal to 1%, nivolumab plus fluoropyrimidine and a platinum based chemotherapy or nivolumab plus ipilimumab is recommended. Now, qualifying statement for recommendation 1.4 from ASCO does say that data from the primary analysis of the Checkmate 648 supports recommendation 1.4 in patients with esophageal squamous cell carcinoma and PDL1 with a TPS greater than or equal to 1%. Additionally, exploratory analysis from Checkmate 648 found that 91% of patients across three study arms had a PDL1 CPS greater than or equal to 1. Therefore, CPS greater than or equal to 1 may be used as a threshold for treatment decision making if TPS is not available. There are also two other qualifying statements that apply to recommendations 1.1 through 1.4, and here ASCO says, the PDL1 cutoffs in recommendations 1.1 to 1.4 are based on subgroup analyses presented in included studies. All possible cutoffs have not been assessed, therefore optimal PDL1 cutoffs are unknown. Also, several additional studies of immunotherapy with programmed cell death protein 1 inhibitors plus chemotherapy compared to placebo plus chemotherapy have shown efficacy. However, these therapy options are not currently US FDA approved. Recommendation 1.5 from ASCO is a strong recommendation with a low quality of evidence. And here ASCO recommends that for patients with HER2 positive gastric or gastroesophageal junction, previously untreated, unresectable or metastatic adenocarcinoma, trastezumab plus pembrolizumab is recommended in combination with fluoropyrimidine and an oxaliplatin-based chemotherapy. Now there are a couple of qualifying statements for recommendation 1.5, starting with, recommendation 1.5 is applicable irrespective of CPS or TPS levels. However, the expert panel notes that pdl one CPS was greater than or equal to one in 87% of the patients included in the Keynote 811 randomized control trial. Also, HER2 positivity was defined in the Keynote 811 as immunohistochemistry 3 plus or immunohistochemistry 2 plus with positive in situ hybridization. Details of this testing methodology are contained in the literature review and analysis section of the full text guideline. Also, trastezumab plus pembrolizumab and chemotherapy is recommended based on the interim analysis showing a response benefit in the first 264 patients enrolled in the Keynote 811. And as of this publication, they're still awaiting the analysis of the primary outcomes overall survival and progression-free survival. Now for recommendations 1.1 to 1.5, those were all of the first-line therapy recommendations. So for our next few, these will be the second and third-line therapy recommendations, starting with recommendation 2.1, which was a strong recommendation with a moderate quality of evidence. And here, ASCO recommends that for patients with advanced gastroesophageal junction or gastroesophageal adenocarcinoma, whose disease has progressed after first-line therapy, rimaciramab plus paclitaxel is recommended. Recommendation 2.1 does have a qualifying statement associated with it. And here, ASCO says that although outside the scope of this review, for patients with gastric or gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinoma, trifluoridine and tapiracil may be offered after progression on second-line therapy. And our last recommendation, recommendation 2.2 from ASCO, is a strong recommendation with a moderate quality of evidence. And here, ASCO recommends that for HER2 positive patients with gastric or gastroesophageal junction adenocarcinomas who have progressed after first-line therapy, Trastezumab rituxacan is recommended. ASCO does note, however, although the key evidence for this recommendation includes patients who receive therapy in the third line setting, 
This option is US FDA approved as a second line and later therapy option. In the full text guideline, there is a treatment algorithm in figure one that does give a visual representation of these treatment recommendations. And that wraps up our ASCO recommendations for the immunotherapy and targeted therapy of advanced gastroesophageal cancer. Now, just to go over a quick recap of some of the recommendations from ASCO, starting with the recommendations for HER2 positive patients with gastric or GEJ adenocarcinomas, ASCO recommends trastuzumab plus pembrolizumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and an oxaloplatinum-based chemotherapy. Now, if there is progression after that, ASCO recommends adding trastuzumab deruxtecan. For HER2 negative patients with a gastric adenocarcinoma, ASCO recommends for PDL1 with a CPS of zero, fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy alone. For a PDL1 with a CPS of one to five, nivolumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy is recommended on a case-by-case -case basis. However, if the CPS is greater than or equal to five, it is recommended and not just on a case-by-case -case basis. For HER2 negative patients with esophageal or GEJ adenocarcinomas, ASCO recommends for a PDL1 with a CPS of zero or PDL1 with TPS of zero, fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy alone. For PDL1 with a CPS of one through five, nivolumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy is recommended on a case-by-case -case basis. But if CPS is greater than or equal to five, it is a recommendation and not only on a case-by-case -case basis. For PDL1 with a CPS of one to 10, Pembrolizumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy is recommended on a case-by-case -case basis, but if the CPS is greater than or equal to 5, it is a recommendation, not only on a case-by-case -case basis. For a PDL1 with a CPS greater than or equal to 10, Pembrolizumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy is recommended. For HER2 negative patients with esophageal squamous cell carcinoma, ASCO recommends for a PDL1 with a CPS greater than or equal to 10, pembrolizumab in combination with fluoropyrimidine and a platinum-based chemotherapy. For a PDL1 with a TPS greater than or equal to 1, ASCO recommends nivolumab plus ipilimumab. And for patients with advanced gastroesophageal or GEJ adenocarcinomas who disease has progressed past the first-line therapy, ASCO recommends ramisirumab plus paclitaxel. So that wraps up the 2023 ASCO recommendations for the immunotherapy and targeted therapy of advanced gastroesophageal cancer. Now something important that ASCO includes with all of their recommendations and guidelines, and that's that ASCO believes that cancer clinical trials are vital to inform medical decisions and improve cancer care, and that all patients should have the opportunity to participate. Now, if you're looking for more information about this guideline or these recommendations, you can find both the quick reference content version and the link to the full text guideline on our website at guidelinescentral.com. While you're there, make sure to check out our hundreds of clinical practice guidelines and quick reference content from over 45 different medical societies. And we'll see you guys on the next guideline.